All right, so we're going to go a little bit further, and we're going to start looking at beta decay. So beta decay is the emission of a beta particle. This is more common with smaller uh, nuclei. So this increases the number of protons. So there's, what it is saying is there's uh, too many neutrons. we got to get a proton. So what's going to happen is the neutron is literally going to get rid of the electron. Because remember, <clears throat> a neutron is just a proton with an electron taped to it. So it's going to eject that um, electron off. And my example is if I've got C14 and I eject that because there's too many um, nucle uh, <laughs> neutrons. Because there's, let me see, uh, 14 and 6, 8 neutrons. So it's going to ditch one of them, one of the electrons off, and turn it into a proton, making there more protons. So it's going to go up. So beta is going to go up. And proton, or atomic number. So beta will go up with proton, um, increasing the uh, proton number or atomic number. So for example, if I've got this heavy isotope of helium or hydrogen and I eject one of those uh, electrons off of a neutron, turn it into a proton, it's going to turn into a helium isotope. All right. Um, so say I've got too many protons, not too neutrons, we've got too many protons. Remember, they clash against each other. They don't like it. So what's going to happen? Well, <clears throat> we are going to capture an electron. So we want to get rid of or decrease the proton for um, this next one. All right, and it says an inner electron. So like one of the ones that are on the inner one, because there's supposed to be two, it's going to absorb one of them, and it's then going to turn one of the protons into a neutron, making the beryllium go down, or, yeah, go down to lithium. This is called electron capture. So it's literally taking an electron, and instead of, what you would have is the proton grabbing the electron, making a neutron. This is what happens. See, look, there's my proton. It's going to grab an electron. It's going to form a neutron. And if you remember what we said, we're conserving things. Everything in this equation is conserved. So here's my line. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 equals 0. All right, so looking at this, we have, ooh, yeah, sorry about this. This should be a little bit more over. So beryllium, it's going to pull in one of the electrons, keeping the same amount of mass, but it's going to switch. It's going to, because we're getting rid of a proton, making it a neutron, it's going to turn into lithium. All right. And this is electron capture. These are the light or lighter isotopes. <clears throat> um. The nucleus captures an electron from the surrounding electron cloud, and it decreases the number of protons. So we did see this. This is the electron capture. This goes from rubidium to kryptonium, um, or, yeah, crypt kryptonium. Uh, 37 on this side, minus 1 on this side, equals 36 on this side. 81 stays the same. All right, so say I've got too many protons. And I'm little itsy-bitsy, maybe a little bit bigger. So carbon-11, not too many neutrons. We, could, we still got too many protons. <clears throat> There's another way to handle this. So I've got six protons, five neutrons. A proton is converted through a to a neutron through the emission of a positron. So we had too many protons. You can do beta decay. Uh, or sorry, too many neutrons. Too many protons, again, you can do capture. You could also do a positron um, emission. 
this is, oop, there it goes. I'll do it real quick again. Watch over here. So one of these protons is going to eject its positive electron, bloop, making it a neutron. So it's going to go from carbon 11, getting rid of a proton, down to boron 11. <clears throat> so here's my proton. And what we're looking at is, before we were talking about how the neutron is a proton and electron. But a proton is really a neutral particle with a positive electron on it. So instead of ejecting, because we don't have this at the moment, I'm ejecting this positiveness so it goes back to a neutron. So I get rid of this, so it goes back to a neutron. It's very weird, right? Okay, so to do this, we've got CL11 um, ejecting that uh, positron gives me boron. Look, at this side, the products, 5 plus 1 equals 6. 11 plus 0 equals 11. Just make sure each side is equal. All right, so we're looking at this, and this is saying, hey, what's what's probably going to happen? So when they get up here, they're too big, they're going to alpha decay. Once they get over 82, they're going to just want to hurl out the, the helium. Too many neutrons, you're going to want to beta decay. Too many protons, you've got a choice. You're either going to have electron capture or positron emission. All right, gamma radiation. So this accompanies all the other nuclear changes. If only gamma radiation is emitted, it temporarily uh, stabilizes the nucleus. And remember, that's what they want. They want to be stabilized. So there's no change in mass and no charge of the nucleus. Because remember, there's no mass, there's no charge for a gamma. So we're going to classify going through. So as we go through this, um, we count across. 195, 195, there you go. 79 minus 1 is 78. 78 is platinum, PT. And this, because I'm getting rid of one, is a beta. I want to say this is a beta. Yeah, hold on. We went over this in class. All right, so this one, we're going to go through, let's see. 226, 222, hmm, 88, ooh, 88, that gives it right away, right there, 88 to 86, so 226 to 222, there's a difference of 4, 88 minus 86, there's a difference of 2, that gives you helium, this is an alpha particle, the decay mode is alpha decay, <clears throat> so let's look for the beta decay of potassium 42, so how do we do this, this is going to go to my um, beta particle, my electron. And on this side, it has to equal this. So what minus 1 equals 19? And 20. These are going to stay the same on the top, 42 and 20. And I'm left with calcium. Okay. Let's look for uh, uh, oxygen 15, a positron. So we have my oxygen 15, oxygen is 8. I put the, the sign, the reaction sign, and I'm going to have a positron, which is a positive 1. So 0, positive 1, E. On this side, I need plus. So 1 plus this number, 7, equals 8. 7 is nitrogen. 15 stays the same across the top. Let's look for the equation for the decay of thorium-231 to protactium-231. What type of decay does thorium undergo? So when we do this, we keep 231 on the top, so it's going to be 0. Thorium is 90. Uh, protactium is 91. So 91 on this side, minus 1 has to be a 90. This is a beta decay. All right, predict the mode of decay. What will they become after the initial decay? Oh, 
Okay, so plutonium, 239. Atomic number is 94. As soon as you see 94, it's over 82, you know it's going to be alpha decay. And all you have to do to figure that out is 94 minus 2 is going to give you 92. 92 is uranium. Phosphorus, 32. Okay, so there are 15 protons, 17 neutrons. Too many neutrons. If we have too many neutrons, we want a beta decay it. Because <clears throat> that goes from a neutron to a proton. So it becomes sulfur, 32. All right, so one of the helpful hints we have is table N. Table N lists all the modes of decay for selected radioisotopes. So if I say gold, 198, you know it's going to be a, uh, a beta decay. If I say calcium, 37, it's going to be a positron or um, po uh, positron emission. Uh, this is alpha decay. So this will give you all of that right there. Okay, so looking at francium-220 becomes after it decays. Francium-220, again, is high, so it's going to be on alpha decay. And right there it says alpha decay. Um, we put 220, put the reactant arrow, and I have the 4 here. 4 plus what gives me 220? So 220 minus 4 is 216. 87 minus 2 is 85. At, at, atium is what's going to be the answer. The nucleus is still unstable, more than 82, so it's probably going to decay again. It's probably going to alpha decay again. All right, so we have this lovely little decay series right here. Certain nuclei cannot gain stability by a single decay. Elements like this have a series of emissions. So uranium-238 will go to one of these three. And then it's going to go down again, and again, and again, and again. And then it's going to go down to lead, to, uh, 214, uh, Bi or Po, polonium. And then it's going to go down again to lead, Bi, Po, and all the way down to lead. So it's going to keep doing this. <clears throat> this is uranium-236. It's a great example of when a nucleide, which has to undergo, undergo a disintegration series, <clears throat> to reach stability. All right, so that's it for right now. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you guys have a great day.